Hello and welcome. In the previous video, we've created the first couple of actions for our project management application. We created a delete action and an update action. The update action can start our projects and we have a delete action to delete our projects. But it would be very nice if we also have a nice button in our project overview that allows us to finish our projects. So let's dive into the project actions and well, add some more. To start off, let's open up the projects overview page. And well, in here we see that we have the nice detail page button, the start project page, the start project button and the delete project button. We're going to add one more action button. Uh, we're going to add that in between the start project and the delete button. And in here, we're going to do the same as we did with the previous buttons. We're going to remove the text and then we are going to find an icon for the finish. Do we have a nice check mark maybe? Yeah, we do have a nice check mark. So the finish button will have a check mark and then we're going to change the style to the data table button style. And in here, I also want to add a tooltip that will tell my users finish project a description what this button does. So we have a start project and a finish project button. Right now it seems like a lot, but if you hover over one of these buttons, only one of the tooltips will show up. So it won't mess around with each other. So let's pass the ID from the project to our action by well clicking on the finish project button pass value to action and select project ID over there. And then we are diving into the action itself. First, let's start off with what we previously did with the other action button as buttons as well. We're going to change the settings. So we're going to give this a nice name, finish project. And we are also going to set the accessibility from this action to the web user profile. And we're going to add the users that we want to allow to press this button as well. Press save. And then we're going to go to the start segment. We're going to create an input variable, which is a record with the name ID because we are passing the ID through from the front end to our actions from the model project. So let's select this, press save, and there we go. However, before we are going to add the update record step to our flow, I, I want to make a little change to our project model because I would like to create a flow in which my users can press the button and update the finish project button if the project is not finished yet. However, once the project is, fi is finished, I don't want them to go back to to do or, or whatever buttons they can click on because uh, once a project is finished, it is finished. And from my point of view, they should create a new project once they want to, well, start a new project or add some new tasks. So let's do that by diving into our data model quickly going into the project model and we're going to add one more property. This is going to be the checkbox property and this is going to be called finished. So we're going to have it default unchecked. And well, now that we have added the finished checkbox to our project model, I'm going to dive back into my finished project action. So here we go. Now what we can do is we can add a condition flow to our action. So I can drag the condition flow in here. And this condition is going to check if our finished check mark is true, yes or no. That means that if the finished check mark is true, if the project is already finished, we're not going to be updating anything more. So we're not going to say like, we're not going to say that you can still update this project. If it is not true, that is when we are going to update the record. So that means that if the check mark is not checked, we allow our users to update the record. And we're going to do that by pressing, 
by selecting the ID variable, the, the, the project. And in here, we're going to add the update that we're going to be doing. So we're going to update the status to done. And we're also going to update the status from finished to the check mark finished, meaning that once the status is updated to done, finished will also be set to true. So let's save that. And now that we know how to add in a condition, let's also immediately open up the action that we've previously created. That is the start project action and add a condition in there as well. So we're going to add the condition flow on top saying that if from our input, if from our project, the finished mark is checked, we are not going to allow our users to update anything else we can update the record. And the nice thing is that if we have already created this update record, we can simply drag it to another place in our flow so that we don't have to, well, change anything about it. We're not going to add the update of the uh, finish checkbox in here because we only want to update the finish checkbox on the final mark of the project, of course, that is in the finish project action. So for now, we'll leave it like this, but we have a nice flow set up that if the project is actually finished, you cannot press any of the other buttons or any of the status update buttons because we don't allow it because of the condition check. So now we've created the flow for our project overview. We have a start project button, we have a finish project button and a delete project button. Let's quickly add the interaction to the finish project button. So that is the on action success action interaction. So create new interaction, more on action success, refetch the data table, save. And now we have a smooth flow. But to make sure that not only for our users, everything runs smoothly, but for us application developers, things keep staying smooth and, and nice as well. We need to make sure that we also tidy up our things. In our application, you are able to add tasks to your project. And if you delete a project, you still have a lot of hovering tasks floating around. And it would be nice if we would also delete the tasks of our project before actually deleting the project. So we are also going to update our delete project action. So click on the action button for the delete action and open up the action overview. So what we are going to do is before the project is deleted, so before we reach this delete record, I want to have deleted the tasks as well. And we can do that via the relation we have created between the project and the tasks model. So the first thing we're going to be doing is I want to loop through all of the tasks our project has and delete those tasks. So we're going to use the loop step and place this after the start step. So in here, we loop through our project and that is the ID input. So we loop through ID, select the tasks relation. So again, via ID, scroll down, go to the tasks relation. And now we loop through all tasks connected to our project. And per iteration, so per loop, we need to give this loop a name. So this is going to be task item. So task underscore item is going to be each item in my loop. I'm going to save this. And well, within each loop, I want to delete the connected tasks. So let's drag that in here and select the task item in there. So save. So select the delete record function in the loop flow and then select the task item as the record you want to delete. What happens right now is that you start the delete project action, you loop 
through all the tasks, first cleaning up the tasks, and then you delete the project itself as well, meaning that you are left with a nice clean slate instead of having some random tasks floating around in the database of your application. That's something you don't really want. So let's test and see if this all works. So make sure that all the settings are good. Every now and then doing a little check is nice. Finish project, accessibility, everything's set. So let's dive to our page and let's test compile to test everything. So we have our projects. We uh, already created, or I've previously created new test project one. Well, let's uh, click on the detail page for this and add some tasks. So um, I'm going to say task one. There we go with some end date and it's connected to this project. And we're also going to create task two, task two. There we go. So now we've added some tasks. Let's go back to our project overview. Let's first test the other functionality we created. We created the finish project button. So if I now press this button, the project should be finished. And there you go. The status is set to done. And we also added a condition check, meaning that if I press start project right now, it should not go back to in progress. And it does indeed not go back to in progress. We can press all the buttons we want, but it stays in status done. Meaning that if we have some projects, things that we need to do, we need to make a new project for this. Because this is our first project and we're leaving the tasks in there. So now let's also press the delete button and this deletes everything. And there we go. We have now deleted everything. So you've now added a nice workflow for your projects. We'll have a look at how you can extend this to your task pages and create something like a start task, for example, a, a finish task button, and how you can extend your application business flow with Betty Blocks Actions. This is the end of our, well, project basics. After this, we're going to look at some application settings and how to set up our development environment with this. But you've just created a project management application. Good job.